because, you know, Roger Christie's in jail and the feds are after him. And, you know, they, they want him to be in a jail for a long time. They say he's a danger to the public. Why? Because he's sharing his religious beliefs about this. Back to the real world, my friend. Thank you for the love and support all this time. We've still got a big job to do. Every day that I've spent in here is an investment in our beautiful future of cannabis liberation. Feed children, release prisoners, heal the sick. There's so much to do. So today is day one in, in many ways in my life. So thanks everybody for being there. Paul. No, we're going to my house, which is 2737 Pacific Heights Road. It, here's a good thing. Here's a good thing, okay? You think you know what's best for yourself all the time, right? So I asked for bail eight times. I got turned down eight times, including twice at the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. If I had gotten bail like I wanted and we wanted so much, I would just now be starting my sentence instead of ending it. You get that? I'm telling you, <laughs> because if you're going to make wow. lemonade out of this... We need you now, not, it, the, the work's been occurring while you were there, right. and, but now it's at the kindling stage and yeah. I think you're gonna be able to really accomplish a piece de resistance, you know? And then how long after do you have to stay in there? I believe till November 14th, which is called my expiration of sentence date. Okay, okay. So then you'd be able to fly back to Hilo, is that yes. kind of the goal? Yeah. And then I'm, I'm, I'm released from under the auspices of the BOP, and I go under the, uh, the uh, care, whatever, uh, regulation of the probation office, okay. U.S. probation office, Felix Mata. So you'll be on probation, basically. Yes, and until the appeal. Right. And when's the appeal set? Uh, the, the appeal is due, the brief is due on October 30th. And that's why we were thinking maybe we're, I'm being kept in so I can't help on the appeal. Hmm. Maybe I, I'm being kept in so I can't help Jeff. Is that the ninth circuit, by the way? Yes. And that's still the same argument that this is four motions that were denied, crucial motions. And the basic argument of those motions is it's marijuana is misscheduled, falsely scheduled. Should not be schedule one. Right. That the wiretap evidence against us. Uh, Permission for wiretap should have been denied. They had other ways to find the evidence against us. Yeah, you're still push your case, aren't you? Oh, Even yeah. though you're out, you're still going to fight for oh, your argument. Oh, my Marijuana goodness. is a sacrament, should not be a Schedule One drug. Correct. It, it doesn't qualify. It, it's a fraud. Schedule One for marijuana is a fraud. Even using the word marijuana is a false flag. It's, it's, it's misinformation. It's designed purposely to throw people off of the trail of the goodness of cannabis hemp. Will you smoke marijuana again? Oh, certainly. But in, in, uh, in, when know, I'm legally uh, allowed spending, to Spending uh, 50 months in jail for something that, uh, that folks are doing now in Colorado and Washington State freely and uh, without uh, any threat of prosecution. I'm thrilled for Colorado. You know, I don't know if you know, I ran for mayor of Denver, Colorado, in 1978 to legalize marijuana. I have proof of that. Jeff's got a... Got a the, the, Newspaper, newspaper clipping. Yeah. Um, so I planted a little seed of consciousness back in the day. I'm so proud of my uh, my home state, uh, really being the leader in the world now for compassionate uh, treatment of their uh, of the people that need it the most, and also respecting the constitutional rights that are so important. And good for the people of Colorado for exercising their right to vote. Uh, I'd like to you know start that uh, prairie fire here in Hawaii. So we go from being the, the last on that list to uh, to be up, uh, competing for the first. And Ron, do you think your case was a, a prosecution or a persecution? There's a persecution. The, you know, there's the official thing that I was distributing marijuana. Um, I think if I had could tell my truth and my whole truth and nothing but the truth and expose my witnesses to a jury of my peers, Sharon and I would have won this case with our co-defendants in 30 minutes time. Yep. I had a, a unique license, a Tenth Amendment defense. I had permission face to face from former U.S. Attorney Ed Kubo, who told me with a handshake and a smile and a pat on the back that I was allowed to run my ministry twice. The DEA agent in Hilo, Jesse Forney, told me on the telephone, We're good. Do your thing. I pass your ministry every day, no problem. The vice squad in Hilo visited me, five of them, official visit, told me they knew all about me. They said they know I'm ordained and I have a special license. Distribute your marijuana, just please keep it quiet. 
please yeah. keep it private and respectful. I said, fine, I'll be happy to do that. And I had t almost 10 very happy years uh, on the ocean front in Hilo. It was a dream come true during, during my righteous, meaningful work, you know, that I feel like I've come to earth to do. What do you think changed after the 10 yeah. years? Uh, we won the peaceful sky. And election. don't be late because he's And there be, is the unofficial like reason late. that we were arrested. And, and there's a testimony from a lawyer uh, who claims to know and heard it from a, a reliable source, uh, Dana Ishibashi, a lawyer here, who was Shear's public defender uh, initially. And he said he knows for a fact that it was because we cut away the, the uh, federal grants from helicopter eradication on the Big Island that the local HPD called the DEA and said, we got to stop this guy. This thing upstairs. There it is, baby. Can you see all the federal markings on the wall? 909. Yep. Cool. Okay, on your time civil rights budget. have been completely trampled upon on one side of the story uh, to the fact that they've got a task force right now setting up dispensaries. Are you aware of that? Yeah. I don't, yeah, and they're asking for suggestions how to do it. And I've got 10 years of experience uh, for one one point of view. I like that idea. I mean, that's that's what I was doing, helping everybody. And then, you know. what about, I mean, 10 years of experience, what about these parents and their children and how they need advice on that? I wonder what the legal ramifications of something like that are, where you would use your experience to help them. You know, like, they're going online to figure out how to batch for their five-year-olds and right. stuff, right? Yeah, that's, that should be happening, as you know. That should be all done for them. But it, what a great learning curve, you know, on the other flip side of it. A little leafy environment for yeah. a moment. I'm, love, I'm loving the drive. This is epic. <laughs> wow. I feel like you just got off a 14-hour flight into paradise. <laughs> Only the flight was a nightmare. Four <laughs> years? Is that how long it's been? Yes, more. More. 50 months plus. Woo!